think this is going to take three or four shots off the round. Perfect. Fits like a glove. My name is David Jones. I am 47 years old. I live in London and the last 20 years I've worked for Sky Sports. The first thing that I want to achieve on this golfing journey is really simple. It's to get better. It's to be able to stand on a tee box on any golf club in the world and feel confident that I know what I'm doing and have a confidence that I know where my ball roughly is going to go. I know I'm not going to be a professional. I know I'm not going to get down to scratch or anything like that. But I think there is a chance for somebody like me who's been down at 12, who's currently at 14, with enough practice to get to single figures. I don't see why that's not achievable. If, if Gary is as good a coach as I think he is, no pressure, and, and I can work and practice, then I think, I think we can do it together. How, how long do we have to describe my golf game? So um, my official handicap right now is 14.3. I'm, I'm not quite sure how we got there because I think I've played to that once in the last two years. My golf is desperately inconsistent. I, I think Jeff Shreve summed it up best when I played golf with him and he said, Dave, I've never seen anyone quite like you on a golf course. For the first nine holes, it looked like you've never played golf before and the second nine holes looked like you're a professional. That's kind of where my golf is, somewhere in the middle. I'm going to let you hit from 100, 50, 100, 7, driver. See all of it. Talk to you about your data. See where you've left off from last lesson. And then wherever I need to start with you. So it might be because you said about Sunningdale, your chipping started to go. We might start there. Or we might start on driver. If I think driver needs the most attention, we'll start there. But try and cover all three areas. So you're just going to hit five shots from each location. 52. 52, which is actually the club that you need to buy, so it'd be good practice. So I had this epiphany, and before Christmas, I decided, you know, what comes first, is it the chicken or the egg? I had this rash moment where I went and bought some new golf clubs, which I hadn't done for 10 years. Then I just I had this horrendous round at Walton Heath Golf Club. Couldn't hit a fairway, couldn't hit a green. I thought this is, this is just, you know, this is the epiphany. I need help. Um, I'm never going to get better unless I actually practice, but I have to be practicing the right things. I have to have some real go-tos that is going to enable me to start making some steady progress. So I'm going to let you have five because it's quite tough indoors to gauge distance. But you see the height that that still came out at? Not really. So that, that height for a 52, you've got plenty of height. My name is Gary Monroe, Director of Golf here at Pitch Golf London and also a PJ professional. And I've been based here for four years uh, and a PJ professional for five years. So, so what I do with uh, All Lessons is I have a Word document that I've got on my laptop and that's just the, the player profile form. So I've got details about them, the handicap, the home courses that they play at, their strengths and weaknesses. So I send this uh, document to them at the end of the lesson where I'm saying this is your homework, this is our end goal for us to get to, example of David's case, single figures. I would like you to work on these areas, this is our long term plan. So in preparation what I'll do is I'll look at their notes before the lesson and I'll look at the uh, report from the last lesson, the video analysis. So I can go through that and, then, and as soon as the customer walks in, see how he is, see how his goal's been and then I'll actually start the lesson by saying right last time what we worked on was grip, posture, takeaway. How has that been? And then we'll check that first of all, because you might have some questions that I can clear up and then we'll progress on with the lesson. I've been someone who's probably had lessons intermittently for 20 years, but it's been two lessons, take a little bit, get confused, forget the rest, and then pick it up again the next year, have a little lesson, have another swing thought going through my mind. So I've probably collected about 50 swing thoughts somewhere along the way. And at any given time, there might be 10 when I'm standing over a ball. Um, that's on a good day. So, you know, I, I, I sort of made a mental decision that I had to stick with one coach for a period of time and actually practice what I was taught in those lessons to see if I can actually get better. Let me go, this should be one of the red. Yeah. 
So what we did last time with the seven iron, posture, and we started to work on that club path, coming more into out. When you said you were playing on the course, your bad one's starting to get... I stopped thinking about the going into out. Okay. We'll, we'll measure it today, you'll see where it's at today. What we're going to go through today is I'm going to check his posture, so hopefully he's done his homework and, and his posture and everything's good. It's a lovely relaxing position. <laughs> <laughs> and what we're working on is a little bit is his club path. He had a tendency to come from outside to in, so he's putting too much left to right spin on the golf ball, losing a little bit of distance and his strike location was becoming inconsistent. So I'm just going to check if we can get his path back to in to out where I left him on the last session um, and just make sure his posture is still good and then we're actually going to move on to driver today because I know that's a club that he likes to avoid so if we can get that tackled I'll be happy. Right. Slightly different, you took that one back further. The swing was longer. Hips, hips are loosening up. Hips are loosened up. Maybe a little bit of sign of confidence as well. Oh. And completely different impact position. That's why you keep me on my toes. <laughs> completely different impact <laughs> position. Your numbers are very different there. So how I became a pro is probably the same as everybody. Tried to make it on the tour. Um, always had that ambition of being like the next Tiger Woods. Did it for a few years, five years. I competed uh, on the Asian tour and the MENA tour, which was really good fun. Um, but I came to a point where, I remember I missed a cut, I was in South Africa at the time, and it was a real moment where I knew I'm just not going to get there, I'm not going to get to this level that I want to get to, I'm not going to make the career out of this. And I was always very analytical and I liked looking at golf swings, I liked helping some of the other pros out there on the, the circuit. And so when I came back, I started getting into elite coaching and looking at the PGA programme. So the PGA, three year degree it was, and that was a brilliant stepping stone. So it was a bit of a reality check going from obviously playing on tour, coming back to that. But doing the PGA, learned a lot about the coaching aspect, things I probably wish I knew before I was actually playing on the tour and um, that would have helped me in my own game. And I was really lucky to get headhunted uh, here at Pitch, I think it was four years ago actually. And they actually gave me the opportunity to come down here and coach full time. Okay, decent, decent strike as well that. I thought it was a great lesson, um, not, not because I was amazing in it, but I just thought there was, there was some real obstacles in my head that I'd built up about various things. You know, for a start, the pitching, just breaking down really simply that I'm just doing it completely wrong. And I've been playing golf a long time, but to have some real um, simple go-tos to what I should be working towards and taking that out on the course, taking it to the range first of all, to just trying to work on controlling different distances, that was really good. So your, your worry is contact and not being able to stop the ball on the green? Yeah. Right. This is your big area. Your club is travelling two degrees upwards when you're trying to hit. So as you get to the golf ball, your club is starting to rise up. That means your lowest part of the golf swing, your low point, is before the ball. Which marries up with what you were saying, you're hitting the ground before the ball. What he said about his last round in Sunningdale, um, it was struggling with his short game. Hadn't actually planned on that before the lesson to touch on his short game, but I thought, just see how his wedge game is from 50 yards. Uh, I'm glad I did, because that's hopefully going to help him a little bit, just with his contact, he's learnt a few new things. Um, but it was good to, to go through each aspect of his iron play and his driving as well. So now he's got all the information, so he can actually go away and, and put it into block practice there. Much better. Pusher. That's why. That's why you. Uh, they're the big bucks. Son. Yeah. Keep me on my toes. I think everyone who's playing golf should be able to hit a seven iron. That's really got to be the starting point, I think. And um, we we were getting there slowly, but the seven iron is a good tool because it, it, it you can do some really basic swing stuff around it. Are you standing in the right place? Are, are you um, swinging on the right lines? Is your connection good? Better. He, he's still on that quest for the in to out. I know he is hard with the club path, but uh, we've got it with irons, we've got it with wedges, got it with irons, it's that driver, and I can see it gets to him a little bit. And the scary, the scary thing is, this, this is square. Do you want me to show you what forward, so for that golf shot, it's about that. As long as I can get the path good with driver in this next lesson, then I'll be happy. 
But a lot of it's going to come from, that's the long term stuff. I know if I can get his path good, get him hitting it higher with driver, he's going to be hitting it further and straighter. But he might come back and have some comments from his rounds between now and when I next see him and he might say actually I'm missing my ball up to the right now, I'm missing that. So I can actually look at some short term stuff which is going to help him get around the golf course but I've still got the long term plan in my head of what I'm trying to do with the clubs to help him score best and get single figures. With the driver, a lot of it is, is feeling those positions that my buddy's got me in over the last 20 years and really trying to adjust those, and I know that's not going to happen quickly. Feeling, feeling in an uncomfortable position at the top of my backswing and, and working out exactly where my hips need to turn to, and then almost reprogramming my body to away from the muscle memory that it's built up to say, right, these are the new foundations, this is where you need to get to, this is going to make you better. I've got so many thoughts now after that. Yeah. After one hour. Like I want to go and have half a day just doing the chipping. Yeah. That practice. I, I look at uh, coaching, people learn in different ways. Some are visual, some are through being told what to do and some are more kinesthetic, we need to move them. Um, so I normally actually try all three in my first lesson with somebody. Um, like we had the swing catalyst down there where I can show him exactly with the lines what he was doing wrong. Uh, he had the data as well but I like to actually move them and talk to them about their changes. And normally one will be a light bulb moment for them. And especially when I started to move him and show him how his shoulders move, how that can affect his club path and how the club comes down, I could see that the light bulb was beginning to click. So we use some visual aids down the bottom with the alignment stick. It's just tapping into what people learn best. And with him moving him that way, I could see it was helping. I think it's the essence of, of good teaching in anything that you're doing. It's, it's if you do something for them, they're not going to learn, but if you actually show them and you guide them and you help them understand why it is they're doing it, then, that, then you can take that away for, for a longer term benefit. If I'm on the golf course, Gary's not going to be with me, so I need to be thinking, why have I played that shot? I need to be able to have those answers myself. It's a funny thing, isn't it, because you're sort of breaking down your technique, so I think in the short term you start to lose your confidence but you've got to have confidence in the process because this is a, not a quick fix. This is a, a long-term gain, which is going to get me into a better place as a golfer. So I actually come away from this going, that's really good because I think if I work at that, I'm going to get better. And that has to be the essence of, of good coaching. So I think in terms of how much he can progress, his goal is very achievable. Um, and he asks some good questions. And the way I teach is I'll ask the the customer, the golfer, a lot of questions too, just so I can check their learning to see if, if it is going in, do they understand what they're doing, when they do something wrong, do they know what they're doing wrong? And he actually answered everything correctly, so his knowledge of the game is good, his skill is pretty decent, so I'm hoping with a bit of technique, um, a, a few bits of fine tuning, he'll be able to reach his goal. Perfect. Right, good, thank you. This could be the game changer. The big thing I've learned so far is confidence. Now you're out playing on the real course, confidence to deal with all the different shots. You're getting the, you're getting the real me on the golf course. <laughs> when you're standing on a tee with, at an actual golf club, there's so much that can go wrong. And, it, and it's just a different mental challenge, I think, for me that I find. It's a save. Yeah. It's a save! It's a, it's a point, it's a statement of a point. <laughs>